Let's take a moment and talk about how to write a good conclusion following the CER format. Now, CER stands for Claim, Evidence, and Reasoning, and we're going to go through each of those pieces. Before we do that, however, let's talk about some general writing tips here in the upper right-hand corner. Some things to consider when writing your conclusion statements is to write in third person and in past tense. Try not to use words like me, I, or we when describing what was happening, and just describe what was going on and what happened before. It's always a good idea to check for grammar and sentence structure. I know as a teacher, when I'm reading some of these, sometimes it's very hard to follow what a student is trying to say just based on their grammar and their sentence structure. Take a moment to read your stuff, maybe even out loud, and try to decipher if, you, if people can understand what's going on. And don't hesitate to read it to somebody else and see if they understand what's going on, especially somebody who didn't know what happened in the lab. All right, let's start with the claim. The claim is the very beginning. A claim is a concise answer to the essential question. Now, concise in this aspect means briefly. So we really should just be brief and to the point as much as possible. You're not describing anything in detail. You're just trying to answer that question. Speaking of the question, all parts of the question should really be answered. Take a look at the question up above. Notice that there's two parts there. It talks about describing what specific chemical identities the five labeled salts are and how it was determined. So it might be a good idea to pause this video right now and take a look at this claim. See how this claim is both concise and it answers both parts of the question. So notice that this claim isn't very long. It's only about a sentence or a couple sentences and it describes both parts. Right up here, it talks about through the use of the flame test and crystal structure, they were able to identify those five label salts. Not only were they able to describe how they were determined, they described specifically what all the salts are. So this bottom stuff right here describes specifically, specifically what each of the chemicals identities of the unlabeled salts are, which was the purpose of the lab. We want to be able to answer that purpose with some specific results. So we have some results here. All right, the next thing to take a look at is the evidence. Evidence is a brief, specific observations. It's multiple, maybe multiple brief, specific observations taken from the collected data. So this is where you're pulling information from your data table, right? So you wanna pull information from that data table, maybe even calculations. And you can write them as bullet points or listed sentences and things like that. Um, or you can just list them out as you see here. It should include numbered measurements when possible. Now, in this evidence here, you'll notice that they made a little kind of statement at the very beginning. It says all observations were qualitative, meaning that they didn't really have any um, measurements that they made. They were mostly just viewing things and looking and, and observing with their senses. There was no quantitative observations here. And that's okay. For this, for this lab, there wasn't really many numbered measurements that could be taken. But if possible, include number measurements, especially where relevant to answering the purpose of the lab um, only mention essential data, right? Essential data is all you really need. You probably do a lot of steps. You don't need to list all the different procedures that you took. You just need to list the specific data. So again, pause the video and see the specific data that was listed here. Uh, notice here in the data, it listed all of the different salt samples because that's part, we have to identify each of those salt samples. It listed some the fact that they emitted certain colored light in a flame test, and it emitted certain crystal structures for each of them. And we're gonna see why in the reasoning section, we're gonna see why each of those are important pieces of data to be listed to help answer that specific claim. All right, going down to the reasoning section, this section is the long section. This is the section that's gonna take the most time thought and really brings things together. The reasoning section is the scientific explanations that include important terms and definitions that connect deeply to how and why your evidence support your claim. So taking a look over on the right, this is where we explain the how and the why, right? We need to explain how and why our evidence is true and why or, or why our claim is true and why the evidence we chose supports our claim. A big key here is to use scientific language. Um, notice here there's lots of important vocabulary terms that are bolded, that I bolded for you in this example reasoning statement. These bolded vocabulary terms came from the lab. They came from the experience, namely by reading the intro, 
by following along with the pre-lab, by doing the analysis section, um, and also just general things that we discussed in class or through our notes. That's where a lot of these words and definitions came from. So again, take a moment and pause the video and read through this reasoning section. It's a little bit long, but it lengthily describes how the claim and the evidence are support each other, and it shows how the student really understands the material. So again, take a look here. There's a lot of stuff going on. They describe definitions, right? So they have definitions, and some definitions are important for readers to understand what's going on. Don't assume your reader knows the background knowledge you do. Yes, it's probably your teacher is going to be reading and scrutinizing your statement, but they have to read it in, in a way that they look beyond that knowledge, that they look as a, somebody who's a layperson reading it who might not understand it, and they want to make sure that you are successful in describing things going on. So including definitions. Notice here they talk about the flame test and the crystal structure. So they're relating back to their claim, and they're describing what's going on. You have this section here that describes further information about how the Bohr model works um, and how valence electrons are jumping up and down. That shows that this student knows what's happening, and they, they know why that information, why those two tests are important and what's going on. They even use specific examples. They pulled salt B a lot of time to show the whole process how salt B was figured out and how that could be applied. And then finally, they wrap back around kind of as a conclusion, that sandwich statement saying, hey, this is why that both pieces of that information, flame test and crystal structure, are able to answer our question. All right, writing a conclusion statement is challenging and it might take some revision. So go back, make sure that you understand how this works and apply it to any of the labs that you are, are doing. And hopefully you'll have very strong, powerful conclusion statements. Good luck.